Hi, I'm Dave Monty, and welcome to my video series, Everything Villages. Today, we're going to cover how to get the most home for your dollar in this incredibly strong seller's market here in the villages, so stay tuned. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. As always, the topics that I cover in my videos are in my free 42-page guide, Buying and Selling a Home in the Villages. If you'd like your free copy, just email me at davemontysales at gmail.com and I'll get it out to you. Uh, the second little bit of housekeeping items is I haven't done a video in a little while and I keep getting emailed by people saying, when are you gonna do another video? Um, part of the issue that I'm running into is I'm running out of topics. Uh, I like to keep my videos very specific to the real estate market, nuts and bolts, to help out my clients. I don't try to get into too much of the, the fluff. Um, there's plenty of other people out there who are showing you the town squares, showing you how the golf carts work, I'm talking about the rec centers, etc. And there's a lot of other realtors out there just say, hey, I just sold a house, I have a house when it went pending, um, I got an open house, you know, a bunch of things that are more promoting them. And I like to keep mine, uh, like I said, very focused on what's of value to my clients. Having said that, um, if there's any topics that you feel that I'm missing or you want to learn about, feel free to email me right here again at davemontysales at gmail.com and I'll try to make a video for you. The other reason I haven't done a video in a while because it is easy just to do a quick market update is the fact that the market hasn't changed that much since the last update that I did. Uh, which did a little bit of predicting as to what was going to happen here uh, this fall, which actually came true, which is prices flattened out quite a bit. And the inventories are remaining really low. We still anticipate the prices to go back up during the busy season. Inventory remains very constant, but you will see an increase in demand when busy season starts and you have many more people in the area. Um, so speaking of low inventories, and that's what we're going to talk about. When you have an incredibly strong seller's market, inventories are low. I've said this in other videos. There's a metric that is used called months of inventory. Anything below six months is a seller's market. Well, we're not measuring it in months anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're measuring it in days. So right now we probably have 10, 11 days worth of inventory. So incredibly low, low inventories couple things that will happen in this market. Um, anytime anything fairly nice comes onto the market, it is gone in a day or two. It has multiple offers and often it's going for well over fair market value. So what's left on the market when people are coming in to do their home tours, uh, out of the 80 homes that might be on the market today, maybe 70 of them have been on the market for a week, two weeks, up to a month, even more. Because they need updating, they're a little bit tired, there might be something odd about it. Not only is there low inventory, what is there isn't as desirable. Now, the reason why it isn't desirable, it is in a lot of other markets, but in this one specifically, you have mainly retirees moving into the villages. 99% of them um, are new retirees. They've just finished their career. The last thing they want to do is come in and work for a few months to get their home up to modern standards. They wanna unpack and they wanna come play. Even my clients who say they are okay with doing a little of updating, as soon as they see a really nice house versus one that's tired, they're gonna to gravitate towards the nice house. So what has the reaction been of the buyers in this market? Well, if they're buying an updated home, they are spending way too much money for it. And I'm gonna show you an example of that a little bit later in the video here, but well over fair market value often. The other thing that they're doing is, even my clients that come in and who've said, I definitely wanna be north of Highway 44 in the main part of the villages. We love live music, we wanna be in the town squares, we play golf, we wanna be closer to where the golf is. So they come in and they look at four or five homes, uh, maybe make an offer on a home that they don't win and they get frustrated. And the easy thing for them to do is to go buy something new, even though it doesn't check probably the most important box of all, which is location. Okay. So with the, with the homes that are currently on the market, like I said, they pretty much need updating, but they are ripe for updating, um, and it's a huge advantage to the clients. There's no bonds or there are lower bonds. 
Um, none of the homes are over 20 years old, so really what you're talking about are cosmetic upgrades. And they're usually no load-bearing walls, so if you ever want to move things around a little bit, it's not that difficult to do. They are the best bargains out there by far, um, but people shy away from them because of what I said before. They just want to come unpack and play. But I'm going to talk about uh, something that my wife and I are going to be putting into play um, that we hope to open up this inventory that isn't as desirable. And I'm going to tell you why we're doing it um, and why it benefits the buyer, um, as well as show you how we're going to do it for you, where it's as seamless as possible for the buyer. Okay. So as I said, the homes that need updating versus the homes that have been updated, and I'm talking similar homes, similar locations, the difference in price can be 25 up to 60% of the price of the home. Now, I did pick an extreme example that I'm going to go through in this video um, that is up in that 64% range of the difference between a home that's been updated versus one that hasn't been updated. So let's look at an example. And as I said before, this is an extreme example, um, but it's a true example. Um, this house sold for $450,000 earlier this summer. And when you take a look at it, you go, wow, that is absolutely beautiful. You know, there, it probably is worth every amount of that $450,000. But what you don't know is that this home is way up north in Marion County, which is typically the least expensive homes in the villages per square foot. Um, this is about a 1,600 square foot home. Typically, this is going to go around $300,000. I'm going to show you another home, same exact home, updated, needs updating. This home sold for $295,000 this fall. It's very similar locations, similar in when they, when they were bought and sold. Um, and you can just see the huge Delta in price. And that's a 64% difference in the price between something that's been updated and not updated. And this house isn't too bad. A lot of it just decor, to be honest. Going back to the original house, what are you actually paying for it with that $450,000? Well, you're not paying for the little tchotchkes. I'm, I'm pointing again at my screen. I get a bad habit of that. These little tchotchkes up top here. You're not paying for any of this furniture. You're not paying for the decor. You're only paying for what is in that house. So what are you paying for? You're paying for paint on the walls, light fixtures, uh, new cabinets in this case, some crown molding, new flooring. So you can achieve this look for fairly inexpensive, but I'm going to show you the inexpensive and probably the more expensive options here. And most of these prices I'm quoting are full house prices. Um, maybe the bathrooms might be an additional charge. Okay, so just so for what you see here, um, you can paint a whole house anywhere between $1,500 to $3,000. You can put in new flooring depending on the quality and how much you put into the home. This flooring is vinyl plank, um, which probably costs closer to that $7,500 to do the whole house. If I were to take a look at rolled vinyl, the stuff that the villages are putting in the new homes, it's probably closer to that $4,000 range. Um, I put crown molding in here. Now I'm going to step back a little bit. I do have other videos and I don't want people to get confused. I have other videos that say um, putting upgrades into your home, you don't always get your money back. What we're talking about here is not upgrading a home, we're talking about updating it, taking an old tired home and making it look like it's modern, modern fixtures, modern flooring, colors, etc. If you were just to take a new home and start putting crown molding in and start putting in uh, plantation shutters and things like that, that's great if you like the aesthetics of it, but you're probably not going to get your money back from those type of upgrades in a newer home. But if you're updating a home, then you, you're probably going to um, get some of that money back. Um, appliance in here, uh, probably these are probably run on total of about $6,000, but you can get a fairly inexpensive appliance package for about $3,000 That's stainless steel. Um, it's just not going to be as nice of, of the appliance. Light fixtures throughout the house, anywhere between $1,200 to $3,000, if not more, just depending on the quality. Um, tearing the wall down, I took a, I actually took a guess at this. I was estimating this to be about $8,000. My guess is it's actually probably a little bit lower. Um, and then new cabinets, and I put new cabinets in here from 
$10,000 to $15,000 because you can get them painted, maybe even a little bit less expensive than that three grand. Um, but some of them will need um, facelifts, some of them need to be replaced. So in this case, let's assume that they went right down the inexpensive option versus the more expensive option. So in this home, they probably put in closer to that 50, that $48,500. So I got this baseline home in here, which cost $295,000. We upgraded it to this for, let's say close to $50,000. And so you got a total of about $345,000 into this home. That sold for $450,000 with instant equity of over $100,000. Now again, I did mention that as an extreme example um, but it was just an easy one just to get people's attention. Pretty much any home that I've looked at updating and sort of did the math in my head, the numbers work out huge in the buyer's favor. Remember, as a buyer, you're not flipping, meaning that profit that a flipper needs to make uh, is in your pocket. It's not in the flipper's pocket. So if you're coming in and buying a home that has been flipped, you're paying easily thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars more for that home because someone did that work for you already. Let's go to what the buyers want and need again. I think the big one that is sticking out in everyone's head is they want to unpack and play. Um, they don't want to overpay, but they often do, um, and they want a good deal. And like I said, the best deal are these homes that need to be updated. So here's what my wife and I are starting to do for our clients, is that we are helping our clients look for the home that they want, location-wise, model-wise. If it needs to be updated, we're gonna do the updating for our clients. So before you even move into the house, you're buying an updated home, but you're gonna buy it at a much reduced rate. So you go ahead and buy this baseline home for $295,000. You write us a check, in this case, maybe 50, for $50,000. So we're closer to the three forty-five dollars because we will make a tiny bit more profit for full disclosure. But we're not going to make flipper profit because we're using your money. You're buying the home, you're paying us, but we're going to do the work for you. We have flooring people, we have paint people, we have kitchen people, bath people, plumbers, electricians all lined up. So we know that we can get this done in a fairly timely fashion, barring any material issues, which seem to be creeping in a little bit right now. Right? The best value for your money in the villages by far is a home that needs to be updated. Because of the nature of the market where it's mainly retirees who just wanna come and play, there's a huge premium for homes that are to be updated already. So what we're proposing is go buy that home that needs to be updated. Let us do the work for you. You are maybe delayed by a month or two while all that work is being done, but you're moving into a freshly updated home that is to your liking, not what the flipper decided they wanted to put into it. Um, when we're going around and we're gonna show homes to our clients, my wife's starting to come along with me and we have tools now to kind of show you this is what it's going to look like once it's been updated for you. So if you want to be in the main part of the villages, you want the best value. You don't want to have to go compete for those highly desirable properties, but you want one of those highly desirable pro properties. This by far is the best strategy. Well, I hope this video gave you some food for thought. As always, we cover these topics in my free 42-page guide, Buying and Selling a Home in the Villages. If you would like your free copy, just email me right here at davemontesales at gmail.com. I hope to be seeing you around the villages. Take care.